now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... Roy Casper? Colonel Mannering here. Oh, thank goodness you've called, Colonel. Everything's gone wrong. Contacts have been murdered and I've been held. They think it's me. I've been questioned for hours and I, I didn't know how much to tell them. They didn't get anything out of you. You obeyed orders exactly? Yes, sir. I, I didn't tell them anything. N nothing about you or the organization. Then there's nothing to worry about. You've done a splendid job, Casper. I'll contact the proper authorities right away. I'll clear you absolutely. There'll be no more questions. Now, listen. But while Colonel Mannering was reassuring Casper, a figure was creeping silently up the fire escape outside. It was Sergeant Blackie, and in his right hand he held a revolver. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 4 of this story, in which John Steed finds himself at a dead end, and the balloon goes up for Emma Peel in what is clearly a case of interrogation. Mother and John Steed had been unable to get the truth from Roy Casper. They knew that secret information must have leaked out through him. Someone had, somehow, managed to persuade him to talk to give away the names of his two contact men. The contact men had both died, and Casper had been given to understand that he was under suspicion of murder. Going back to his flat, Casper had sent an emergency message in the shape of a homing pigeon to Colonel Mannering. Mannering, aware that this was big trouble for his organization, had made his own plans, which was why he was taking so long over the phone call. Yes, sir. But there is still so much I don't understand. There's no need for you to understand. You do as you're told. Yes, sir. Yes, of course, sir. Uh, yes. May I inquire in your own apartment? Uh, yes, but they suspect I'm guilty. I've told you I will clear you. But Izzy Pound is dead. What about that murder, sir? I, I was the only one who knew him. I have told you there is nothing to worry about. But there was. For the man outside on the fire escape had succeeded in opening the window and slipping inside. Roy Casper was so intent on his phone conversation that he didn't hear the door open slowly. Blackie raised the revolver. <laughs> on the other end of the line, the colonel heard the shot and the crash as Casper, dead before he reached the floor, fell heavily across the telephone, taking it with him. Colonel Mannering smiled. Splendid. Splendid, Blackie. The colonel replaced his own receiver with a smile of satisfaction. Downstairs in the street, John Steed's keen ears caught the sound of the shot. He left his car and raced into the building, tearing up to Casper's apartment. He burst in through the door. Casper! Casper! Oh, oh, no. Oh, yes. The body lay sprawled amongst the upturned table and telephone, a vase of flowers spilt water mixing with the blood on the carpet, and next to Casper's right hand was an ugly, black-snouted revolver. It looked as though Roy Casper, riddled with guilt by his own actions, had taken the easy way up. Next morning, Emma Peel also made a thorough search of a flat. This time it was Charles Minnow's. And she had Morton, the forensic expert, with her. We've been all over everything, Mrs. Peel. So I see. The place looks like it. You must call in on me when I'm next spring cleaning. Anything interesting? This. A cigarette end, very similar to the one we found in Roy Casper's flat when he disappeared. Hand-rolled custom-made, mixed of Virginian and Turkish tobaccos, with... With the... a preponderance of oriental herbs, right? Right. Excuse me. Mrs. Peel made for the phone. In his headquarters, Mother put down a dry sherry he was sipping and answered the call. 
Mother. We found something at Minnow's. A cigarette stub. Exactly the same brand as that found in Roy Casper's place. It's hand-rolled, custom-made mixture of Virginian and Turkish tobaccos, with a preponderance of oriental herbs. What do you think? I think it's revolting. <laughs> Quite spoilt my sherry. It proves there's a link. It proves there's a kink, too. You better watch your step, Mrs. Peel. Any man who'd smoke such a nauseating mixture must be evil incarnate. But don't you see? It's the same pattern as before. Whoever grabbed Casper has now grabbed Minnow. We don't know for certain that Casper was grabbed. Just the same? Just the same. We must assume the worst. You're quite right, yes. You mean Minnow will talk? If it's the same pattern, then of course he will talk. And that means betraying his contacts. Minnow's number one contact is a fellow called Fillington. He's a professional footballer. You'd better get to him and tip him off. This is one game in which he really will have to keep his eye on the ball. When Steve joined Mother later that morning, Mother wasn't very happy. He was even less happy when he heard of Casper's death the night before. He couldn't be deader. He was shot in an attempt to make it look like suicide. It wasn't, of course. I suppose it could have been. No, no, it just looks like it. Casper was told to go away and think things over. Izzy Pound's death really shook him. Now, I swear he would have come clean sooner or later. Now, that's why they wiped him out. They... Who are they? Yes, well, that's just the point, isn't it? Who are they? Mrs. Peel rang up. Minnow's missing. <sighs> Mrs. Peel has found evidence to suggest there's been a similar snatch. It might be a complete repeat performance. Mrs. Peel's on her way to warn Fiddington. He's Minnow's number one contact. Well, let's hope it's not a repeat performance. Let's hope Fiddington's still alive and kicking. Fiddington was alive and kicking. He was in a grassy field near his home, booting the ball against a tree. 46, 47, uh, Mrs. Peel, at the wheel of her sports car, was driving the roads around the area, searching for Hillington. She saw him and screamed to a stop. Hillington missed the tree. The football rolled towards a small clump of bushes. Fillington made after it, just as Mrs. Peel drew up. As Fillington approached the bushes, the snout of a rifle pushed its way through the leaves. Fillington picked up the ball and started heading it. Mrs. Peel yelled from the near road. Mr. Fillington spun round, his head hit the ball, just as the bullet hit his head. Mother. Mother, Mrs. Peel, too late. Fillington. Is dead. Dead. I see. This confirms it, doesn't it? Minnow has talked. Looks like it. It's all systems go from now on. I'm ready. Just give me the name of Minnow's second contact. It's a street vendor. He has a stall in Bridgewell Road. His name is Herbert Puffin. Got it. Herbert Puffin. Street vendor, Bridgewell Road. So that's Minnow's second contact. Colonel Mannering was working on much the same lines. Your second contact. The name of your second contact, Minnow. <coughs> now, come on, come on, man. The name of your second contact. Give it to me. Give me his name. No. No. I say, escape attempts are allowed here, aren't they? Certainly. Good, good. I wouldn't want to break the rules, you know. I say, you've hurt your hand. Oh, it's nothing. Well, just the same, I put something on if I were you, sir. That was an awfully good punch, if you'll allow me to say so. I, I should think you've done a fair amount of boxing in the ring. Well, I did box my battalion. Really? Then you know old Gnosha right. Uh, we were in the same team together. Yeah, splendid man, Gnosha. First class. Salt of the earth. But uh, another of this! Uh, name your second contact. Tell me now. Uh, His name, you know. Uh, His name! Bridgewell Road is nearly always busy. On the day Mrs. Peel called, it was unusually so. She searched for the street vendor, Herbert Puffin, and eventually found his store. A sign above it read H. Puffin, balloon for every occasion. H. Puffin was occupied blowing up balloons from a small cylinder of gas. Balloons on various lengths of string bobbed all around him. Mr. Puffin! Mr. Puffin! Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Puffin, you're in great danger. Danger? A gentle, silly old man and balloons said a lot me. How could I possibly be in danger? Look, I'm Emma Peel. Mother sent me here. Look, my identification. The old man peered at the card Emma Peel held out. His manner changed. So did his accent. 
Mother sent you, hmm? What's the problem? Minnow, there's been a leak. His first contact's dead. We think you're known. If so, they'll be after you too. Well, thanks for the warning. Perhaps I'd better pack and get... Down! Down! As old Puffin and Emma Peel dropped for cover behind the stall, balloons began to burst around them. Bullets sang out. He's got a... He's got us a bit pinned down, I'm afraid. Yes, let's counterattack. Set these balloons free and burst a few of the others. Blackie, the assassin, moved to the back of the stall. People in the street laughed as the balloons exploded. Mrs. Peel was waiting for Blackie. She jumped him. Ah! Oh! The gun dropped to the pavement. Old Puffin grabbed it. Mrs. Peel was thrown. Ah! Blackie staggered back, picked up the sharp scissors Puffin had been using to cut his string, and plunged forward, using them as a dagger. He drew his arm back, ready to stab, when... Ah! Puffin stood amongst the wreckage of his stall. The revolver in his hand. Funny. I'm so old, and yet that's the first man I've ever killed. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.